For our next Chapter 6 list program, you're going to create a game using lists. Let's just do a quick review. Remember, a list is a container that stores a collection of values or elements. These elements are stored in sequential order, and the length of a list can grow or shrink in size as the program progresses. We've also used a lot of functions. Our list functions are len, sum, max, min, and list. Remember when you do a function call, the function comes first, and the list is the argument. We've, we've also used a lot of list methods. Our list methods are append, insert, sort, index, pop, and remove. For our list method calls, you must use a dot notation. That means the list goes first, and then the dot, and then the method, and then if there's an argument, it would go in parentheses. We also talked about two operators. We have the in operator that lets you know if an element is in the list. You can also use a not in. And we've used the little asterisk to mean replicate. So here are some examples of finding something in the list, something not in the list, and then what this line of code would do would be creating a list with five dashes because it would be replicating this item, this element, five times. Your new program is to create a game. For your programming requirements, you must use at least one list in your code. You, can, you should use as many list functions, methods, and operators as you can. So you've seen the list already. How many of them do you think you can use in your game? You don't have to use them all, but try and use more, you know, several. You must divide your code into several functions. Each function should be fairly short. You're going to use a main function to call the helper functions, and you're going to pass in parameters as needed. For your game requirements, you need to have some kind of a concept, or your game should be telling some kind of a story, like a beginning, middle, end. And you should have a way to win and a way to lose. Let's get started by looking at our Dragon Throne program from Chapter 2. Uh, your game for this assignment can be something similar. Uh, it can still have dragons and caves, or it can be something that's along that same line, but maybe it's different. Um, instead of dragons, it could be something else, but it's still the same type of game. We're going to add a list for the cave. Right now, we just used random numbers. We're going to continue to use random numbers, and we're going to decide on a way to win or lose. I'm going to give you several options as we go. So let's take a look at our Dragon's Realm from Chapter 2. You can open yours up. I'm going to open mine up. Okay, here's our basic code from chapter 2. We were just learning if statements at the time, so we used a random number to choose one for the dragon, and maybe you added in a second random number for an empty cave, and everything else was going to be you got the treasure. So we've got our, our introduction here, and I'm going to pick one of five caves, and in this one, the, lo the dragon jumped out and ate me. If we run again, I'll pick one again, and this time he gave me the treasure. So you can see I've got a couple different endings, but there really wasn't that much to the game. It was going to be pretty similar all the time, and there was just this one level. So we can take the concept of this game, and we can make it more interesting by having a list for the, the caves, instead of just you know a random number for the one with the dragon and a random number for the empty. We didn't really have a list here. And I can store some values in there. So instead of just looking in, in caves and finding a dragon, um, I'm going to look for treasure. So I can store random numbers in my list of how much treasure is in the caves. So let's take a look at it uh, er, early or an easy modification of our dragon's realm. So I still have an introduction here. I've just taken out some things about the dragon. You're in a land full of dragons. In front of you are caves. The caves contain gold coins. Choose five caves. So I've set a parameter here. This doesn't have to be how you play the game, but this is an option where you're going to go five times and then stop and see where you're at. You could also just keep going until you die, or you could keep going and let them opt out. So just think about this. This is a basic game, and there are many variations to it. So the way I chose was to always pick five caves. 
And if I can collect more than 20 coins, I'm going to win. Less than 20 coins, I don't win. And the, the caves, the number of coins is going to be de determined randomly. So in my main, of course, I'm going to have the option of playing again. I'm going to have my coins, and I initialize it at zero, and I have an empty list for my caves. I have my intro. And I'm going to pick a random number of caves, so anywhere between maybe 6 and 12. It's, again, there's a lot of different places where you can have your own creativity there. And I'm making this a return function, but there's other ways of doing it as well. So I'm going when I'm filling in the caves, I will return how many caves I filled. So I, um, you know that lists always start with 0, and I don't want to have a 0 cave. So when I fill my caves, I'm just going to append 0 to it. So there's going to be a 0 in index 0. And I'm going to ignore that for the whole rest of the game. So I have to have it. It's there. But I choose not to use it. I'm just filling it with a 0. So I'm always going to start with 1 to whatever. I've got a random number for caves. So I just chose between 6 and 12 caves. And so after I fill out the 0, my loop is going to start at 1, and it's going to go to number of caves plus 1, because remember, a for loop doesn't reach the upper number. Then I'm going to just choose that it can have anywhere between 1 and 5 coins. I pick that random number, and I append it. So I'm going to, other than 0, fill my list with random numbers that will represent the number of coins in my cave. And then I just return the number of caves so I can use it in the rest of my program. Now I'm going to basically play the game by having another return function here, select caves. And it's going to keep track of my coins. Remember, I initialized coins. So let's go to select caves. I'm going to pass in a few parameters. I have the number of caves. The caves is my list. And I have my coins. I'm also going to return coins so I can kind of keep track. Now my counter is going to be because I said earlier that I wanted the user, the player of the game, to go to five caves. This is going to keep track of how many caves. I'm going to print the caves that are available. This is just a simple print. You've already learned two ways to print the elements of the list. I don't actually want to print the elements of the list because I do not want to give away how many coins are in the cave. I'm only going to print the index. So cave one, cave two, cave three. So I'm using a for loop um, by value, even though I'm not printing the value, or by index. Okay, then um, I'm going to get their, their choice. Okay, so here I'm asking them which cave are they going to select. And is it their first choice, second choice, second choice, third choice, so on and so forth. If they've already uh, picked that cave, I want to say something like the cave is empty. Um, oh. After I, they pick a choice, I'm just going to have a message here. And I'm going to take the value now. So choice is the index. I'm going to find the value from that cave and make it into a variable, add coins. I'm going to print how many coins they got, and then I'm going to actually add it to coins. I increment my counter, and I'm ready to do this five times for the five caves that they're going to select. Then I just have to compare. In my ending, I just pass in my coins, see if they got less than 20, they lose, more than 20 or more, they win. So it's fairly straightforward. And I ask if they want to play again. Over, over here, I've got a run already. And I've got my little intro there. You can choose five caves and avoid the dragon. I don't have a dragon yet. We'll add that in. And I have a random number of eight caves, one through eight. So let's pick cave one. And I got four coins. Okay. Now I'm going to pick um, cave eight. And I got um, another four coins, so I have a total of eight. Let's pick three. Now I have two more coins, I have ten. Let's pick five. And I got four, so I have fourteen. I better hurry up if I'm going to make it. And I ended up with 15 coins on enough to win. So you have a basic game here. Now one of the pro and so if the, you get this far, you've met the requirements. You've got a list, 
you've used you know several functions uh, not really any methods uh, other than a pen but you know you've got a pretty good game going on here now one problem is you didn't really keep track of the case that they selected so what if I said cave one over and over again if I found a cave with a lot of coins in it I could keep selecting that and the cave's not really going to keep having that many coins in it so the next modification you want, might want to make is to remove the cave that they selected. And that would look something like this. So the modification I made in this is, okay, so here I've got the coins added, and then I pop. Remember that choice is an index, so I'm going to use pop. I just take it out. Now what happens when I take out that cave? Everything else moves down. So the number is still going to be there, but I can't pick the cave again. So just by this one little thing, I've added in another method. So that ups my score a little bit there. And now when I run it, first I have 12 caves to pick from, so I'm going to pick cave 1. Okay, and I got 3 coins. Now, I'm, now notice I do not have 12 caves anymore. So it still shows a 1, but it all of these just move down. Now I'm going to use cave 7. I only got two more coins and now I've decreased it to just have 10 selections. So I can never really pick the same cave again because I'm popping it. Everything else might be moving over but each one is a different cave. Now another thing I can do is make sure that I have to do a valid. So what if I've got 1 through 8 here what if I tried to do a 10? Okay, I've got an error. So one thing you can do to improve your program is make sure you don't get any runtime errors like this. Check the choice all the time. Make sure it's a valid index. So that's one problem you might come across with remove is it is changing the length all the time. Now with the simple if statement, if the choice is greater than the length, then I might have some kind of an error message and have them pick again. You know that wouldn't be very difficult to put in here. Another option is to use a second list to keep track of my selections. Now what I've done in my main program, I still have my caves and I've also declared a second empty list called selections and I'm going to keep it empty until I actually make a selection Then I'm going to append it. So up here in my select caves, now I also have to pass in selections list, just like I pass in my caves list as a parameter. Everything else is the same here. But where I had um, the, the pop before, now what I'm going to do is take my choice and I'm going to append it to selections. So if, my, if the cave I chose was cave 7, I'm going to take the number 7 and append it to selections. Then if I choose K3, I would append 3. So the selections, it's kind of like with your dice rolls where the index meant something. This one, the values are going to represent the indexes of the caves that I chose. So I can keep track of that as I go. Now over here when I'm printing, I've just added in the in operator. So if I is not in selections, that means I haven't selected it yet, I'm going to print it. If it is in selections, I don't print it. And that way, it's only going to show you the caves that I haven't selected. Now I still might need to do some testing because even though the cave doesn't select, if I'm being a tester, I'm going to try some of those caves anyways. And so you can use a, you know, a, the in operator also up here. So when I've made a selection, I can just make sure that it's not in select, otherwise I can have an error message. Or, you know, don't get a runtime error, but display a message saying you've already selected that cave. So you don't see that here, but that's definitely something that I would encourage you to put in. So you can use the in operator when I print. I could also use the in operator with the selection to make sure that I haven't selected it by saying not in. Now when I run this, I've got um, 11 caves. You can see them right here. I'm going to pick cave 6. 
I got five coins. And then notice here when I'm printing that six doesn't show up. Okay. So that's kind of a user-friendly thing. Like I said, even because it doesn't show up doesn't mean the person can't type it in. So you want to test for it, which you don't quite see here, but it's a fairly simple thing to do. Okay, I've got 17 coins. And this time I won. Yay! Now this is still a fairly simple program, and if you've added all these things in, you're doing a really good job of working with lists, methods, and list functions, and also list operators. So to kind of jazz up your program a little bit, another thing you can do is add in some trolls and some dragons. When I added in a troll to mine, the troll is actually going to take your coins, so you basically have to start over. And it's going to be something similar. I'm going to still get random numbers and what I'm gonna what I did was I just decided that if the number was one that was going to represent a troll. So let's take a look at what the code could look like. So I didn't have to change anything anywhere else. I'm just here in my select caves and I am testing to make sure um, well I'm testing I'm looking to see at the value of the choice. So if I chose cave seven I'm going to see what was stored in Cave 7, and that's right here, I'm accessing the value. If it's greater than 1, then I'm just going to add that value to my coins. Okay, so I didn't change anything here. This is all the code that we had before, just indented now. But if the, the choice is 1, then I made a different message. I said that there was a troll there. He took all your coins. I reset coins back to 0. I still appended the choice. I still increment in my counter, but the user, the player, has to start all over again. So it's a, a kind of handy little thing there. When I run it, I've got my, I did add in some more directions that some caves have trolls. That was still all your gold. How many have trolls? I don't know. It would be whichever ones ended up with a one randomly. So I might have no trolls. I could have lots of trolls. It's going to be different every time I run it. So I'm going to start with 1, and I got 5 coins, and let's do 9, and I got coins, and 4, and it has a troll. So even though I had 8 coins, now I'm back to 0, I'm going to try 6, 3 coins, 7, I ended up with 8 coins. Now at this point, it's going to be a lot harder to get 20 coins, so you might want to decrease it. Maybe, and so you can see here, that I was said 12. So I would need to change my instructions instead of 20 to 12 coins because they're going to have to start over again sometimes. Now, for even more variety, you can add in a dragon who's going to just kill you on the spot. So you might not even get to five caves. In order to do that, I just put in, I used another random number to choose one cave for the dragon. And it'll look like this. So I made a couple modifications in this one. First of all, when I'm filling the coins, I wanted to have a different number to represent the dragon, so I'm using a negative one. I've still got my zero. I've still just filled everything randomly. And then after all of that, I picked one cave to represent the dragon. So I've got a variable here called dragon. And this time, what I'm getting a random number for is not for the number of coins, but for the index of the dragon. So I went to one. The random number is from 1 to number of caves. So if I have 8 caves, I'm going to pick from 1 to 8, so on and so forth. And that 1 cave, so now I'm going to use dragon as an index to my caves list. And for that particular value, I make it a negative 1. So it had some other random number for coins, and I'm changing that to a negative 1. So of how, no matter how many caves I have, one of them has a dragon. Now I also had to change my select caves because I had three choices now. I have coins. Oh, actually, and I, I'm also here. I'm checking to see that it's already been selected. So I did do a test in that. If my choice is in selections, there's a message. You already sele selected it. And then if it's greater than one, you get the coins. If it equals negative one, there's the dragon. Otherwise, it's the troll. 
So I just kind of expanded my if statement for all the different possibilities. If it is the dragon, I set the count to 5 so it would end immediately. I didn't let them pick any more caves. I set the coins to 0 so I could test that in my ending. And so then in my ending, instead of just two choices, I had three. One of them was just game over. You were fried. One of them is you got coins but not enough. And one of them is you win. So we'll try this for my cave. I've got eight caves here. Let's do one. And the dragon ate me. You can see right away. I, I, I lost. So let's play again. I've only got six caves. I'm going to have to try carefully. I'm going to do five. I've got five coins. I'm going to try five again. We'll just test it here. And it tells me cave already selected. Choose again. And five doesn't show. So let's try six. I got uh, four more coins. Let's try one. More coins. Two. Oh, dragon lurked. Let's try one more time. And I've only got six caves again, so I'm most, most likely going to die. Oh, and I won. I better end on a winning note. So that's like this takes you through the whole gamut of things that you can do. And then there's of course some other variations. You could put in just some simple graphics and you could also put in some levels. So here's an example. This program uses one list for the caves and I also use a list for pictures. So this list saves different um, variations of the caves. And here's my introduction, a fantasy land that has dragons. So you can kind of see the caves here. They look a little bit, you know, humpish. And I've got the number written down to each one. Now I did this game a little bit differently. So instead of going into five caves, each one has a level. So first, my first, you know, journey has six caves. And after I pick one, it's going to open up a different level of caves. So in order to win, you need to get five treasures. Okay. Right now I see six caves. I'm going to pick one, okay, and I have no treasures, and you, um, I, I started with no treasures, I entered cave one, it was empty, you continue to the back of the cave, and you go down a tunnel, and now I see five more caves, so see how this one has levels instead, it's just a variation, I need five to win, let's try cave five, and I get some treasure, I use a simple little ASCII art to show treasure, now I'm on seven caves, six, um, I got a treasure, four more to go. Um, that one was empty. Five, I got some treasure, and I hope that I don't find the dragon. Oh, dragon, I'm eaten, and the dragon is new. Now two treasures richer, and I died. Okay, so that's another type of variation. And then one more, which I did fairly differently, and it just uses one list, and I made it more like a, it looks like a grid, but I, I actually have two lists on this one. One that's going to keep track of the number of coins in each room, and one of them keeps track of my location. So if I'm here, I, my only valid places to go are 7, 5, and 9, so it kind of keeps track of my location, and I have a separate list that keeps track of the treasures there. When I play this game, I've got my little introduction because it should have some kind of a story to it. Um, the house has, an, I'm, I find a treasure map that takes me to this mystery house. X marks where you start, and I have you um, selected a random number where you start each time. So right now I'm starting at one, so I can only go to two or four, and I have to collect coins. And if I go to a bad room, I might lose my energy. So once again, different kinds of things you can do with your game. So let's go to room two. It contained coins. I have five coins to add to my treasure. I still have all my energy. Now I'm over here. You see how the X moved. I have a list keeping track, and I'm going to go to three. And it had negative energy, so I lost an energy, but I kept my coins. Now I can go back to two, but just nothing's going to happen because the room was empty. And now I'm going to go to five. Oh, negative energy. Um, let's go to four. Coins, yay. Now I can go up to one or down to seven. 
oh coins yay and let's go to eight and I win and then it lets me play again if I want to so there's lots of variations lots of ways to lose use lists really what you want to do before you even get started is come up with your concept decide how you're going to use lists and really get a good grasp of what you're going to do don't just sit down and start coding and then you're going to kind of code yourself into a corner and get completely lost and nobody's going to be able to help you because you don't know so kind of get it down in paper you can even plan it before you come to class what is your game going to be like start really really simple like the first one I showed you and as time permits add cool stuff to it but the main thing is to have a concept and get a game so start simple get something to work and then as time permits kind of add the cool stuff to it